Okay. Welcome to Range of Strength Podcast. I have a returning guest here with me today. The man himself, James <laughs> Fuller. <laughs> Strongman Archaeology. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing well, brother. Thanks for uh, finding some time to sit down with me and chat shop. Oh, sure. Yeah. Love talking shop. Yep. We've been having some good discussion back and forth lately about some one hand lifts and uh yeah i thought it'd be cool to jump on and just give a little bit more backstory around that and just some just some shared discussion for the listeners about some thoughts on the one hand lifts and um yeah i think it's i'm seeing obviously with the work i'm i'm in where it has a very um, focused approach to flexibility training. Uh, one thing that's really pulled me to the old time uh, strength training in the last year has been really bringing and merging the two together a little bit better. Cause I think that's a lot of the issues that people are having too, is like they want to work on their flexibility and a lot of individuals are improving their flexibility. It's becoming this really, you know, it's really, popular right now everyone's getting realizing there's a way to train and improve your flexibility but they're kind of getting lost mm -hmm. in how they should then use these ranges a little bit differently because mm. a lot of times and like well what happened to me specifically was like i had built a lot of these movement compensations from the way i was training i wasn't addressing certain movement patterns and strengths and capacities and i chose you know i'm going to really improve my flexibility and then it was coming back to strength. It's now I got a different hat on now and I'm looking at strength and that's why I'm really into the old time uh, way of training. Cause it's like, you're addressing strength in every way possible. And one of the, the bigger ones that doesn't seem to be there anymore is the one hand lifts. Mm. And, and when, when I say that people probably are thinking like, Oh, there's, you know, unilateral exercises are there but we're talking about like lifting <laughs> like full yeah like full body movement you know yeah 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 uh, so yeah something you... that is it's it's a one hand snatch is does not deserve to be in the same room as a as a one hand peck fly you know chest fly <laughs> yeah. you know we're not yeah. we're not talking a one hand wrist curl versus a one hand clean and jerk yeah you know totally yeah, exactly. different I and mean, i had yeah. that experience in the past too it was like using exercises as like isolation work and trying to improve right. on an imbalance or you know something like that but right. yeah it's it is much more it has been recently too like exploring the variety of one hand lifts um that are classic and even just like yep. that having that lens now and experimenting a little bit more with lifting heavy with one hand <laughs> like mm -hmm. that's just not no one's really doing that and I think it's yep. with the discussion yep. we've had, like it's something that people should be considering more and, mm. and at least using it as an assessment tool to address compensations and, and where they're lacking some of the things that they're looking for, instead of maybe always looking for like a mobility exercise, it's like just lift on this side. Yeah. You could, you could, uh, well, I mean, you know, you look at what gets what gets people lifting in the first place, you know, like you were into powerlifting, right? Yeah. That's what got you really dedicated about lifting was powerlifting. Yeah. And so you did powerlifting training, which is good for powerlifting, but it's not necessarily good for regular folks who don't care about powerlifting. Yeah. So competitive, the competitive side of anything is a great way of introducing people to weights. Yeah. Well, competitive side of anything can get someone in the door of whatever whatever the subject matter is you know because someone might go to a meet and see the competition and be interested in it yeah but um the problem the problem i see is we're basing everything on on what we know the most about you know which is the competition lifts the reason why it's easy to teach someone the lifts we teach them is because they're the lifts we use in competition yeah you know we're teaching what we know which is good and bad um, and that's what everyone wants to get good at. They want to get good at what they see, um, you know, and 
yeah. people assume that two hand lifts are going to be stronger and I get it, but it's like, well, if you can easily within no time, if you're snatching body weight, you're doing a regular snatch with, with body weight in no time, you'll be one hand snatching 60 to 70% body weight with either hand. Yeah. So let's say, you know, cause the, you got one hand, it's always ahead of the other one. So let's say you're doing 70% with your dominant hand and 65% with your non-dominant hand. So that's 135%, right? Yeah. That's more than what you're doing with two hands. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That means that the only real part of you that's getting overloaded by doing a two hand snatch will be the torso stability and the legs coming up out of the hole. Mm -hmm. But if you think about your grip, your arms, your shoulders, your upper back, you're missing out on a lot by only doing a two hand snatch versus saying, well, I should be able to do at least 60% with either hand. You know, you're leaving a lot on the table for all around strength. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think that was never mind all the mobility and lateral movement and all yeah. the stuff, the coordination. It's yeah. just much more athletic. I I would always rather opt to teach people to do a one hand snatch or and clean and jerk than a two hand version. Because what does a regular person care about more? Yeah. You know. So yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the old way of training too, it was, I mean, the one hand lifting was really kind of the focus of every, I don't know if they knew as much like that they were maybe doing, uh, you know, the three dimensional, it was more like we just, they were just lifted with one hand. It was like in a, a, a maybe a greater feat of strength to see that one hand lift the bent press and, and things like that. But, yeah. and, and coming back to, you know, what we see, what we're seeing now, we're seeing a, a huge lack of that lateral strength and rotation being right. a, applied in a variety of ways. And everyone's, yeah. you know, developing these compensations. No one wants to return to lifting. And it's like, there's, there's options there. Yeah. You'd be better off training the one hand lifts and using the two hand lifts as an accessory, not the other way around. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, same thing, you know, with squats. Squats are great, but they're really just a test of endurance for your torso before your torso gives out. Yeah. You know, unless you have really good mechanics, the proper short torso, most people are going to get more leg development by pushing their step ups and lunges. Mm. You know, not, of course, I'm not saying squats are useless, but I'm saying that you got to look at what is the strength of everything we do. We got to look at the strength of it. What's the weakness of it, you know? So yeah. you're going to be better off using a lot of lunges and step ups. If you're really looking to build your legs, you yeah. know, not yeah. just squats. Yeah. You know, so there for are you, plenty of runners and cyclists out there with huge <laughs> legs and they aren't squatting. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And for you, it was, uh, like more so something when you got into competing in the old time strongman was a, that was more so when you started getting into the one lift say eh? yeah yeah and i i was just doing it for the history of it just kind of well let's see what the old, what these old lifters were doing what were they going through what was it like trying to trying to lift heavy that way and then i started slowly realizing you know there's a lot of movement to this that i'm missing out on and I'm, i grew up as an athlete you know so i I really appreciate it. Wow, this really moves you around. I mean, anyone that's been an athlete or been athletic and then takes up lifting will realize that the, the weightlifting, the lifting is fun, but it's not very athletic. It really doesn't move you around a heck of a lot. Right. You know, like a squat is great, but it's not really that athletic. Mm -hmm. But you do a one hand snatch, you do heavy get ups with one hand. I mean, that's, you got to be athletic to do that stuff. Yeah. You've got to have a matter of balance and coordination or timing to really yeah. move some weight, you know? Yeah. That's kind of like, I kind of got hooked on it like that way too, is just starting to do these one hand lifts and realizing like I'm troubleshooting my strength more than I am with the traditional, well, I guess the traditional approach nowadays, like just like your, your basic linear patterns or this, you know, 
I was, Mm -hmm. my body was learning how to overcome and troubleshoot what muscles I had to use, uh, in that light over any other lift that I had done for a long time. And I'm Mm -hmm. still getting into it now. Like it's, it has that athletic appeal to it. Like when you overcome a one arm snatch or a one arm overhead squat, it like it shakes things up. Like, <laughs> yes, yes. Well, you, the hardest part is teaching people how to not lift like a two handed lifter, but that's all they've done. But they try to translate everything into two handed lifting. Yeah. You know, yeah. like if you look at someone who's doing, um, like I'm helping someone now with strongman competition and learning to do that big dumbbell, that big dumbbell press. And they, they have the hardest time because if they were a bent presser, they would understand about leaning over and getting that bell over the center of gravity. But instead they're still trying to pretend they're doing this. It's like, if you take the other arm down, that's what they're trying to do. And it's like, it's not going to work. You've got to lean and shift over and get this bell over your hips. Yeah. Okay. And it's a similar thing with, with, with uh, the one hand lifts is people try to, because they don't know better, but it's like, no, you've got to really change what you're doing. You're almost better off if you've never done a two hand snatch yeah. or a two hand clean and jerk. You know? that, that was the conversation that we had, I think last year was, should the entry point for strength training be learning how to side bend and lateral bend first, which yeah, the old school approach really was that you could like, that was kind of like, Hey, you had to learn how to do that first. Yeah. Um, and like, no one can do that now. Like it's, and we, again, we've talked about like all the symptoms of back pain and, uh, yep. even, you can even relate, relate it to knee pain too. Like sure. there's oh, yeah. a lot of, uh, restrictions in starting to, in people like being able to actually troubleshoot a side bend and a lateral bend, how to actually move the sure. body in a way where it's strong. And I think that was something that they were doing back then that, it, you know, it were, could be, could be an entry point for people is like, learn how to bend before you learn how to actually yeah. bilateral lift. Yeah. Well, if you think about it by people, it's, it's as simple as this is that if you think about somebody that's only done, you know, um, squats, deadlifts, um, uh, push presses, jerks, and they've never learned to operate, um, holding on to the weight with one hand or pushing the weight off with one leg. It's going to be years of the dominant side compensating for the other side. Yeah. Years of that. So whatever problems have been going on have not been addressed. It's been a constant picking up the pace for the other side. It's been a dysfunctional relationship for lack of a better explanation, you know, and the first is, time you do a, do a one hand snatch, you didn't realize just how bad off the other side was. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And it's like, okay, maybe if I start doing one handed snatches, every third snatch workout, maybe I'll start balancing some stuff out because you know, as well as I do, if your dominant side is picking up the slack of the non-dominant side, are you lifting at your potential? Not at all. No, not at close. But if you can close that gap, what's going to happen to your lift? It's going to go up. Yeah. And your injury potential is going to go down. Yeah. Yeah. And that's been another one for me too. Like I've been dealing with the left side issues. That was like ultimately what led me to that injury. Uh, Just dealing with all these issues on my left side. And then I went into the flexibility and developed, you know, got really hard. I went crazy monk on that stuff. Sure. Returning to. You have to. Yeah, for sure. And you have to swing the pendulum. I don't, yeah. We can all try to, okay, just ease into it. And don't go too crazy. Now, you know you're too tight, so what are you going to do? You're going to become the most long, elongated, flexible <laughs> rubber man that you can. It's just yeah. natural. Yeah, that competitiveness it, comes out. Well, I think it's natural. I think it, I, I, I've had people say, well, you shouldn't do that. And it's like, yeah, but it's the human condition. We tend to go one way, and then we tend to go the other. Yeah, yeah. It's It's... As long as you realize there is a point that you guy go, okay, I've swung far enough. Now it's time to bring it to the middle. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I've been doing now, bringing it to the middle with uh, old time yeah. strength philosophy and the one arm lifts and the one hand lifts are, uh, man, 
Uh, I'm really figuring out some stuff on my left side. Uh, like I'm really figuring out whether you want to or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I have to, right. And you know, those little s- subtle tips, like don't lift more on your right. Keep it as at bay with how yeah. hard you work. That's a good tip because yeah. when you actually start working harder on your left, cause you're like, I oh, want yeah, it. You do. Right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so that's kind of and then, part of it, right? Like your you body's, know. you're always going to go for the easier route, but. Oh yeah. And then once in a while, I'll let the dominant side go crazy. And then I'll tell the non-dominant side, you need to get at least 90% of those reps now. You've yeah. got to, yeah. you know. So yeah. there, there are times, but it's only once in every great while. Yeah. I mean, and it's hard to lie to yourself. When you feel how out of whack the other side is, you're just, you're just kidding yourself if you don't address it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we're talking a little bit about one-arm snatch, but... I think that's one that a lot of people are familiar with. Um, I think, uh, yeah, if you maybe. Can I offer a recommendation on it? Yeah. You ever uh, try tearing a phone book in half? You ever try tearing a bunch of pieces of paper or some cardboard in half? Right? Yeah. So you're like this, right? Try to, you're trying to pull your hands apart from one another, right? Yeah. You're trying to create distance. That's exactly what I'm thinking of when I do a one hand snatch. So I have my non, my free hand, so to speak, is on that thigh. That's going to push away as I rip the phone book away from that hand with the weight in that hand. So I envision ripping a phone book and then I'll have the hand on the other thigh. And again, I'm imagining ripping some paper in half or a phone book. And that's how I envision because I want as equal or much attention pushing the free hand into that thigh pushing away. Yeah. So I'm trying to elongate my body. So I'm not, not at all thinking just lifting with the weighted hand. Mm-hmm. I'm as much pulling up as I am pushing down. Yeah. It becomes very total body that way. Yes. And you, yes. And it's, so I thought I should mention that just, just to kind of bring some clarity that it's a one hand lift, but you're going to use both hands. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of what I'm getting at is, uh, there's so many other ones. Like, uh, I've been doing the one arm hack lift, yeah. uh, one arm Jefferson. Um, those are some, you know, lifts off the, just strength lifts off the ground, like not really going overhead. Um, I think the one hand hack lift is a gold mine of yeah. stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Like I, I'll do anything just to kind of get a rough idea. I, I don't, yeah, it looks goofy. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I, I know they do it in all around, you know, old time strongman competition. I'm like, oh, all right, I'll take a look at it. And I, it looks silly. And then I tried it and I was like, wow, there's a lot going on here. If you had told me, I would have laughed you right out of that, right out of the place. But I'm like, nope, I'm wrong. There's a lot going on. Yeah. My traps haven't been that sore in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. The traps and then what it does for uh, the, tfl the glute medius quadratus lumborum lower lab you know yeah yeah it's yeah there's a lot going on that was a sleeper yeah uh, but if you if you don't want to lift like anyone else then don't lift like anyone else <laughs> you know yeah 100 percent um yeah i think uh this is kind of the thought process i think that p- could help a lot of people is is thinking about approaching some one hand lifts to more of a maximal approach and learning how to troubleshoot their strength a little bit better. Um, Do you have like any tips for how people should start that journey and kind of think about, you know, that as like uh, an entry point for troubleshooting their strength and, and figuring out what's going on? I would have people, I think if, if you're, I think what you're saying is uh, I would, if you've been doing a lot of two hand lifts and you're not, it depends on how much you can get away from just pulling a lot of weight. You know, if you're lifting, if you're deadlifting 500 pounds, every workout or 400 pounds, every workout, it might be hard to not be doing that for a while. Mm -hmm. So you have to work with people mentally on it. So I'll say, well, why don't you do a couple of workouts of one hand deadlifts? Yeah. Get the form down, get a good feel for it, and then do the next two workouts, do deadlifts. 
mm-hmm. you know, because you're not going to forget how to deadlift if you take a couple workouts off. It's not a big deal, you know. And of course, we're not talking about competitive powerlifters or strongman competitors. We're talking regular everyday people. Yeah, yeah. Trying to, yeah. I guess I keep training strength and and feeling like they're figuring stuff out if they wanted to get stronger, but also just feeling like they're developing strength in different ways. Yeah, it's uh, it's cool when you start using some some big weight on your one handed lifts. It it's cool to deadlift six hundred pounds. I'm not going to lie to you, but deadlifting f- over four hundred with one hand is really fun. Yeah, is that you really thing? feel yeah, like one hand dead? I've done four twelve or so, something like that. And wow somewhere close to 400 with my left so uh but that i mean i'm not going to say deadlifting 600 feels like crap of course it feels great but there's something about and i'm a little on the high end i should my deadlift shouldn't be my one hand deadlift is a little high but i don't know if it's because i like it or what but um the i think the more ways i think it's kind of like movement i think the more ways you can move your body it, it, it's fun when you learn how to do something different with your body you've never done before. Yeah. And strength is the same way. I think everyone I've ever worked with, I've never tried to make anyone crazy about strength, but when they realize they move better and they're stronger and they don't get what stronger means, but when they start realizing how much better the quality of their life is, I was able to go do this or do that or move this or, Geez, I had to change the tire in my car and I thought it was going to kill me and it didn't. It was no big deal. Or once they start realizing what that means, then they're all in and they kind of are open to whatever you throw at them, you know? And I think the one hand lifts, there is, at least when I grew up, it was kind of, you know, to be able to do something one handed was pretty cool. Yeah. You know? There's a certain thought attached to, well, that's why the bent press used to be so popular is because the public assumed and strong men didn't correct them in this assumption, but they assumed if you could put a 300 pound barbell overhead with one hand on a bent press, that meant you could lift 600 pounds overhead with two hands, which we know (laughs) wasn't even true, but there's been a fascination of if somebody comes along and picks something up with two hands and someone else a little bit later says, oh, that's pretty good. And they do it with one that's pretty cool that's impressive yeah so i think that's already built into our psyche into our thought process would you agree with that oh yeah 100 percent. yeah so i think once people start realizing they can lift a lot of weight with one hand i think it's i think it's an easy sell but it's it's like anything it's it's um if you're fine with not deadlifting heavy with two hands for a while fine go all in on one hand squats do it for a uh one hand squats, one hand deadlifts for a couple of weeks and do one hand hack lifts for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And then after a month, go back to your deadlifts and see what happens. Yeah. You know, the other thing we're seeing a lot too, like in the industry, like the performance side is um, a lot of the movement patterns are, are being reanalyzed and like the, I don't know if you've heard of Goda. Um, they're coming out with uh, systems of, you know, how to develop, proper movement patterns and and a proper gait for sprinting, which it is more about rotation capacity than it is about just linear movement. So a lot of, they're doing a lot of rotation work. Um, They're actually really stepping away from weights because they're, you know, kind of marking that as like, well, it's, it's creating all these bad movement capacities, but spending time mentoring with you in the last year, has me now thinking like these are the lifts they need to be doing these are like the rotational lifts developing rotational strength um, yep. on top of those gait patterns i mean we're talking about really high-end kind of you know athletes getting paid a lot of money um yep. Yep. so it is a careful kind of uh thing to talk about but I sure think- well you just have to be honest i tend not to look at those folks because uh regardless of the drugs involved if if those went away the same people would still be there today they have the genetics yeah so we have to be careful with working with people that have won the genetic lottery because what doesn't work with them you know (laughs) um 
and I'm, it's no jealousy. It's just some of us are born better at certain things than others. And we have to, if, if you and I are going to help regular people, then we need to really look at everything through the eyes of what is this going to do for the regular person yeah. who's got a job, a uh, spouse, kids, a mortgage, a car payment or two. What can we help them get done during the week, three days a week, maybe nothing on the weekends because they get family commitments. So am I saying ignore that data that you're talking about? No, I'm not saying that, but I'm like, you also got to be careful with who does it apply to? Yeah, for sure. You know? And um, I guess that's kind of the problem with the everyday Joe sometimes as well as comparing themselves to, well, that's what we get, they get presented with. Yes. Here's, here's the next new and exciting sports specific program or whatever. Yes. I see yes. it all the time, right? Like someone yes. sees a new commercial of like an athlete doing jumps and bounds or CrossFit or whatever. And then next thing you know, they think that's what they have to do. And they, they're frustrated because they can't move. Okay. <laughs> they don't know how to troubleshoot their own strength. And that's... I, uh, yeah. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. I think, and I'm not big on trying to give someone... If I'm working with a shot putter, I'm not going to give them a lift that mimics the shot put. I'm not doing that. If I'm working with a triple jumper, I'm not giving them a lift that mimics the triple jump. Yeah. But I will say that if the strength movements you give them can help them be more athletic, mm -hmm. that's never a bad thing. And that's why I'm more about giving an athlete a bent press, a one hand get up, a one hand snatch, one hand deadlifts. Because when they run, when they sidestep, we're not doing hops with our feet together like they're chained together, are we? No, we're moving one foot in front of the other. One hand swings forward, the other one swings back. Yeah. When we run, when we walk, you know? And so we need strength movements that move the body, that, that don't take away from body coordination, body awareness. We want it to enhance it. That's why, like a post I made today about fixing uh technique problems by by fixing weaknesses i don't like isolation movements i'm not saying they don't work but for me it's a last resort if there's a full body movement i can use to fix a weakness i'm going to do it because uh like i've seen someone who's using a lot of tibialis work to fix a problem and i'm like no tibialis isolation work isn't useless but you're going to develop a bunch of coordination of isolation, being good at isolation. And mm. that's going to affect your movement patterns if you do too much of it. Yeah. So that's why I prefer to use a dumbbell knee up because it's working the shin muscle, but it's also teaching you to incorporate it into, into a full body movement. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, Yo, for sure. Um, that's, I think, what's happening with flexibility training too and mobility training is individuals are getting so caught up in isolating and increasing flexibility at a joint that they then aren't right. able to bring any of that together. So I've been working with a lot of people that want yes. to refine their squat. Uh, like they have all this really good flexibility and range and then they can't squat. It's like, right. Well, right. If you haven't been able to actually troubleshoot <laughs> how to move your body and, and uh, apply everything in a multifaceted way. Cause they're spending so much time in isolation. Yeah. So just if just stretching, thinking that it's going to fix all your mobility and flexibility issues is about as dumb as me flexing in the mirror, thinking it's going to fix all my strength and muscle mass issues. <laughs> it's totally subjective. You're going only on how you feel. Yeah. There's no quantification. So if you do Let's say you do good mornings with a bar on your back, of course. You do, say, some plates under the front of your feet. And you work, you start out with the bar and you work up to, say, 10 kilos on each side. And you're able to bend all the way down and you're able to do 20 reps. And within a month, you're able to do uh, 30 kilos on each side for 20 reps going all the way down. You can quantify how much your mobility and strength is improved through that range of motion. You know, you've gained strength and you've gained mobility. Yeah. And you've prepared yourself to be in that extreme range of motion. Whereas if you just bent over to touch your toes in a pike position, we'll say, that doesn't build any strength. Yeah. 
at least you won't get as injured getting pushed into that position, but you have no ability to contract in that position, to resist being forced into that position. And that's a bad place to be. Yeah, 100%. So I would say training that the only way you can do one is you have to do both. So if you want the strength and you have the mobility, well, guess what? Too bad. They're the same lift. So you got to do both because yeah. it's in that lift. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not that hard once you put the pieces together. It really isn't. You no, know, sure. you may look at something that's connect the dots and it doesn't make any sense to you, but the information's there. But once you start connecting the dots, oh, that's what that is. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. And I think, uh, well, too, I think it's a bit of an understanding that you do want to kind of immerse yourself into that environment, you know, not to necessarily to understand it and take, take from it, you know, what's going to be of most benefit to you and like help you figure out how you can actually troubleshoot your own issues. Um, rather than just saying like, Oh, here's, here's a program. It's like, you do want to spend some time. I, I've been spending the last year really diving into this stuff and I'm still learning like every day. Um, you will <laughs> believe me. <laughs> yeah. So I think that that is a mindset too, right? Cause that's, that's a similar thing with flexibility training is people will not go all in on it. Like they're, they're like, and they'll never actually learn how to stretch, like, cause they just haven't actually right. went all in on it. And then right. same goes with learning some of these different kind of classic style ways of, of lifting and, and troubleshooting your strength is like, you, you have to spend some time, like really wanting to learn how to do this and understand what muscles are yep. being used and how to use them. And it's the yes. same thing as we talked about at the start of the uh, episode of people you know, wanting to spend that time learning the competitive lifts because they want a power lift. So like, right. When you reflect back on that, think about how much time you devoted <laughs> to really, it wasn't just a matter of going in and squatting. It was like, no, you put the bar here, you put it there. Where does it feel right. good for you? How do your knees move this way? Um, yep. So I think that that too is, is an environment that you need to create for yourself when maybe trying some of these one hand lifts and also getting into these new kind of thoughts of, training your strength and uh, the mobility comes so quickly when you use the weight to do the work it's it kind of feels like cheating you know <laughs> it it's so interesting because if you try to get someone to bend or move a certain way and it just hurts and, and unless you can what what do you do to motivate them well it's good for you oh so what so there's a lot of stuff so what you know but if i can get someone to worry about okay just do the reps i'm gonna I want you to do 20 reps with this weight and if at some point it feels like your body's okay at going lower, go lower. They don't even have to do really any conscious work. Because sometimes I'll just say, do you feel like going lower? And they're like, yeah, I can go a little lower. And as the body warms up, it's getting the message from the repetitions to go deeper and deeper and deeper. Next thing you know, they're going deeper than they ever would have gone on their own without weight. Because the yeah. weights kind of push them down. Gives them some know? feedback. And it's temporary. It's like when I get people down into splits in 15 minutes, it's like by using certain weighted exercises. Yeah, it's temporary. But the next time you do it, you're going to use a little more weight. So the message is going to be stronger. So the effect will last longer. Hmm. And at some point, you're going to get strong enough that it will last. So like I can get out of bed and do splits. And so that's what's going to happen to them. At some point, they're going to get strong enough that they've re-educated or reprogrammed that the joint angles, the resting length, and it's going to stay that way, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's really easy. And it, it, once people can see how fast it can happen, then they really get on board. It's very easy to get people to be compliant. Yeah. You know? No, that's cool. Um, so we have, I little... would say a benefit of the one hand lifts I just thought of is you're not going to need a lot of weight. Yeah. You know, that's if you're it. training at home, you don't have to worry about, well, I'm going to need to make sure I've got a barbell and a couple of 45 for these one hand snatches. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> Not yeah. today, maybe someday. Yeah. But yeah. And that's if you're thing. someone that doesn't have a lot of weight, the one hand lifts can be a, a real salvation for that. Yeah. Yeah. You can really figure out a lot with the one hand hack lift to your. Drink. Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah. You know, so yeah. Um, 
Yeah, that's great, James. I, I just wanted to jump on today and just kind of quickly wrap a little bit about some of those thoughts on one hand lifts. And uh, yeah, also just mention um, that little project we have coming up, the mm. full time range of strength. Sure. Uh, yeah. That's uh, if, if any of the listeners um, find themselves, you know, interested in diving into some of this stuff and um, like learning a little bit more about how they can apply some of this to some of those traditional ways of training. Um, sure. That's a journey that we're going to start creating in about a week or so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, keep an eye out for that. Um, uh, did you have anything else you wanted to add to that or? Well, if you, if you, if you really want to get your money's worth and your time's worth, you know, the old time lifts get a lot done in yeah. a small amount of time. You, yeah. you don't have to, you're not going to need the mobility session that we're all going to skip before yeah. we start lifting the weights. You're, you're going to have to be mobile to do a lot of these lifts yeah. and you're going to have to be strong. So it just, it's like yin and yang. You can't escape one or the other, you know, they're two sides of the same coin. So, yeah. Um, and that was kind of one of the things um, hoping to bring to that, um thing that we're doing there is kind of like here's some prerequisite thoughts for flexibility on this lift right like kind of mm -hmm. showing how you know those things can come together really well yep. and, and kind of make yep. that all-encompassing approach so yep yep very it's, cool it's yeah it's it's hard to explain how much you're going to enjoy moving that much with some weight because it really is I don't know anyone that doesn't like moving. And you know what I mean? Like, uh, like learning strength in different ways. I, strength training is addictive because it's, it is a very natural, I think human instinct for us to want to be strong and feel that, that we're getting strong. And I think people yeah. get intimidated by what's being presented as like more commercial, sure. right? And there's so yeah. many ways you can apply your strength. And, and work on developing that it's well and it's it's just more expressive i think it's it's more expressing you yourself your own self the more ways you can express yourself you know like an artist only having two colors to paint with versus an artist who has any color yeah yeah it's so uh, yeah you don't want to limit yourself uh, but i it's hard for me to explain but once you start slinging some right around, once you start doing a heavy one hand deadlift or hack lift, a heavy one hand snatch or a one hand clean, it's, it's pretty cool. It really is. You know, it really is a lot of fun. You know? That's awesome. Yeah. I'm excited to get into it a bit more with you, man. Yeah. Yeah. It should be fun. It should be a lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Thanks for jumping on with me and uh, more to come. All right. Take care. My brother.